very fortunate um, to have Paul Edelman from Sauk Valley Community College who's been partnering with CKS over the past couple of years to do study abroad programs for community colleges, especially in the sort of Midwest, um, and working with uh, the overseas director of CKS, Dr. Rune Ngo, uh, who will be providing his comments and, and uh, discussion points uh, during the presentation. So, Paul, please, thank you. It's a small rural community college in Illinois, about two hours west of Chicago. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on how the whole process began. Um, my background initially was in the Middle East, and spent most of my time in the Middle East. And one of the things I want to sort of convey through the talk today is the ripple effect that all this has through all the centers and the funding. And it started out, the Center for Southeast Asian Studies at Northern Illinois University was given a uh, Fulbright Hayes group project to the Philippines back in 2015 and I was selected to participate on that. They took five community college students or five community college faculty and five high school faculty from Northern Illinois to participate in the program. From there I was selected to participate in a curriculum internationalization program to Cambodia run by um, Judy Ledgerwood, who was a director of the center at the time. And the core part of this was to try to take community college faculty over, create curriculum projects that the center can then post on their website for other faculty and other high school teachers to utilize, and then to also um, the long-term project was to develop a program to take students over to Cambodia. And then in 2017, myself and another individual that had gone on the initial 2016 program went back over to Cambodia, again partially funded through the center at NIU, to try to do outreach to universities uh, in Cambodia and nonprofits to try to find partnerships that we can collaborate with in order to actually develop the program for Cambodia. Then we came back, met with the center again, and we decided to go forward with the study abroad program. So in 2018, last summer, we ran the first program, spent two weeks in Phnom Penh and one week in uh, Siem Reap. We had five community college students it was run partly through my colleagues, but then another community college as well. So we had two different uh, faculty from two different colleges. And it was a rather successful program. So what I want, kind of want to do is to illustrate how this continues to ripple through. You know, I got that money. The other faculty member who also participated got that money. Now we developed the study abroad program. And that study abroad program is now rippling through the students that uh, went on that program last summer. So I want to kind of talk a little bit about CKS and one of the advantages for utilizing a CORIC center, and in this particular case, the CKS. When we went over in 2017 and met with the different universities and met with the centers, one of the concerns I had of partnering with the universities in particular was that they were rather large, they didn't have a specific individual that was designated to run study abroad programs. And we were kind of afraid that since we were a small program that we would get lost in the process. And we had met with CKS the year before, met with them again, and we just had a good feeling about it. They had locations in Phnom Penh and Siem Reap where we wanted to go, which allowed us to have facilities as well as staff in both of those areas. And that was one of the advantages that we saw. The other thing that we saw here was that they already had linkages with American universities and had done those partnerships as well. And because they've done those partnerships and brought students over, they had de designated staff to do those components, and um, they had that experience, and we could just jump off and piggyback on that experience as well. And so that was very important to us. And it was um, the facilities that they had. So the facilities in terms of ultimately the library that they have, 
um, infrastructure, conference room, co a conference space within Phnom Penh, conference space in Seal Reap. They have libraries there that our students can utilize, internet access, and so wherever we went, they had staff and facilities for us to ultimately utilize. They were able to help us with hotel accommodations, and through that process and through their connections, we were able to get us pretty good rates on hotels, probably saved us a thousand or more dollars at least on hotel rates just because of their connections that they had. And they were able to organize transportation. They were very concerned about security, so they organized transportation, made sure that everything was set up. So all in-country transportation was taken care of through CKS as well. And the scheduling, because my because I had traveled over there and the other co-director had traveled, we had connected with some scholars over there and some people with NGOs. As a result, we kind of developed some of the program around the people that we had met, but to fill in the gaps, we were able to rely on CKS to reach out to nonprofits, reach out to governmental organizations, to fill in some of those gaps in terms of getting lectures, uh, site visits, and things like that. The overall structure of the program was we would have lecture in the morning, probably at least two hours of lecture in the morning at CKS, and then go out in the field in the afternoon and have an excursion or site visit somewhere uh, related to culture, history, or politics, or economics. And then on the weekend, we would typically have a day trip somewhere where we'd go out and uh, do a visit as well. They were able to handle all of this uh, components for us and did it very well. The other advantage that I wanted to point out here <laughs> is something that I didn't think about at the beginning. And it came into play later on and turned out to be very important. And that is CKS is registered as an American nonprofit. And as an American nonprofit, they keep track of all the receipts where all the money's being spent. And if you ever dealt with study abroad programs, that becomes a very big issue. What we were able to do is send that money over to CKS as it's a large program uh, cost, and then they were able to distribute it to the different speakers and different hotels and, and so forth, and get receipts for that. And that accountability, if anything ever comes back, we have those receipts to justify those expenses. The other thing is, because they have a bank in the US, we could just transfer that money to the US bank and not have to worry about an overseas entity. And that created a lot less paperwork for us. And that was a huge advantage uh, that we hit on. Uh, the other thing in Cambodia, if you use a credit card, they charge a 2% fee for using a credit card and that's an added cost. By simply transferring the money to CKS, they can pull that money out in cash from their local banks and be able to pay the, the local institutions, and that helped reduce some of the cost as well. Um, and I don't know if, how many of you have experienced this, but last summer I noticed this, and then it happened again this, it's gonna happen again this summer. My local bank won't let me use my ATM card in Cambodia and some of the other Southeast Asian countries because there's a fraud alert on the countries. And as a result, I had to go to another bank and get a different uh, ATM card. But if you run into that instance, that can create a barrier for getting access to funds as well. And so that's another advantage to have that to CKS. The program itself, uh, some of the benefits that we see for the students, we did evaluation with the students afterwards and then post-trip uh, discussions with them as well. And some of the things that they told us was they really enjoyed the uh, cultural exposure. And that's really the emphasis that they would recommend for future programs. They enjoyed the lectures, but it's going out, meeting the public, getting involved, going on the excursions, interacting with the individuals, going to the market. These were the things that were really valuable to them. And they want more of that. And so as we develop the program going forward, we're going to try to focus more on the cultural components. Have that lecture, you need to have that base, that foundation, but at the same time, uh, we're going to go out and try to do more of those cultural components. What that has done, as we have seen going forward, is it has created a sense of globalization, a sense of diversity within those students as they enter then the university programs. 
All five have gone on to university. One is at University of Illinois in anthropology. Three are at Northern Illinois University, and one is at Augustana. Four of them are now um, studying Southeast Asian studies in some respects, either majoring or getting a certificate in Southeast Asian studies. Um, and so coming with that is the language training. Language training was not a component or a central component of our program. We did have an introductory class on the language. They told us we want more of that language component, and that's something we're going to try to incorporate as well. Because of this program, we were able to funnel students then into the NIU Southeast Asian program, which is one of the things that they wanted, one of the goals ultimately. And three, three of the students at NIU are again are either majoring or getting a certificate in Southeast Asian studies. Also keep in mind that these are community college students. They tend to come from relatively um, um, more poor backgrounds. And it was kind of a struggle for some of them to acquire the money to actually go on the program. But what we've seen is that it's energized the students. They've gone into the programs at NIU, and the faculty there have noticed them, and I think at least two of the students now have FLAS scholarships for summer uh, language training. And these are students that are now able to get that money to get an education that perhaps they didn't have before. And again, just this ripple effect for me getting the, the Fulbright, studying, doing the program, eventually students, and now the students are gonna uh, focus on Southeast Asia, and at least a couple of them wanna get graduate programs, graduate uh, studies in there now. Uh, one wants to enter a foreign service program, and so you see this extension um, throughout the program as a whole. The one thing I did also want to kind of address from a community college perspective. Some of the challenges that uh, we are faced with, some of these may be unique to community colleges, some may overlap with universities as well. But at institutional level, uh, particularly at my institution where it's relatively small, you don't have uh, faculty, you don't have administrators that have a great deal of knowledge in terms of international programs or international travel, and as a result, simply don't have that knowledge. Um, that's not um, disparaging in any way, they just don't have the experience at all. So in some, some way, we need to try to overcome that barrier so that you have those individuals there. And when you're at smaller institutions, and now all of a sudden you're inserting a study abroad program, what's happening is you're also placing more burden on those individuals in terms of the jobs that they have to do. And they don't want to spend money necessarily because of the tight budgets on a specific study abroad individual. And that's something that you have to overcome. And of course, there's always the legal issue. One of the things that we had to overcome for this one is initially the colleges wanted to run it through um, like the for profit companies at first. But we didn't want that because we wanted it to be specifically an academic type of program. Uh, so we were able to come overcome that, but a lot of community colleges run overseas programs through those for-profit types of corporations. And this isn't large, but there is still some of this perception that going overseas is still a vacation. And so you still have to overcome some of that perception. Um, to, and then we started fully understanding the amount of work that goes into it, the amount of time. One of the central complaints we had from students who retired all the time because we were going all the time in terms of getting them to, to the lectures and the activities and so forth. The other thing is getting more faculty involved. Cost is a big issue. Um, just finding funds to go overseas to uh, just do those experiences so we can find some way to get faculty involved, get more faculty involved, and they're going to start internationalizing the curriculum as well. Some are teaching because the pay rate at a lot of community colleges is relatively low. You have to teach in the summertime. It doesn't open up space for them to do overseas programs, and that can be a challenge. And then for students, simply cost is an issue, particularly among community college students. And then family environment. Um, I think all of our students, except for one, came from single parent backgrounds, and a lot of them worked. So it was, they had to take time off from work 
to actually do the program uh, or borrow money from their parents in some cases. And so overcoming those financial components can be difficult. And then just the global capital, the fact that you need a visa, that you need a passport to go overseas. And those are things that we have to try to overcome. I think if you can focus on the institutional and faculty components, then you can help with the student ones. Because if you have the institutional support and faculty support, then that kind of goes down to the students. And, uh, they'll kind of energize the students for those activities. One of my reasons for putting this up here is to also get feedback from you guys in terms of what suggestions do you have for us to try to overcome these ideas. Um, I'll just say that my co-director is retiring this year and I am from a small community college so we've had a difficult time to try to place this program. Fortunately, NIU has picked it up for this coming year, but um, maybe in the future as well. But ultimately, we kind of like to have it housed within a community college because of the community college emphasis. Yeah.